Welcome back to our channel. Today, I will bring you a new sci-fi thriller, Event Horizon. In 1997, a groundbreaking sci-fi masterpiece emerged. With a budget of only $32 million, the director, Paul Anderson, propelled this film to the pinnacle of the sci-fi genre. However, it's more apt to say it reached the ceiling of horror films rather than just sci-fi. However, due to the exceedingly terrifying visuals, the director had to cut 30 minutes of footage painfully to make it suitable for release. Despite this, many viewers were still left profoundly disturbed after watching the sci-fi horror movie Event Horizon. Today, let's explore what makes this film extraordinary. The story begins with Captain Miller leading the Clark, who is primarily tasked with various space rescues. A new distress call emerges just as they are preparing to return from a completed mission. Two days prior, the event horizon, missing for seven years, suddenly emitted a distress signal near Neptune. Captain Miller once again leads his team on a rescue mission to find the long-lost event horizon. This time, they are joined by Dr. Weir, the architect of the event horizon. Dr. Weir explains the spatial distortion technology they developed years ago, which was the focus of their experiment with the event horizon. The ship vanished while traversing a black hole causing a sudden dimensional disarray that led to the crew's mysterious disappearance overnight. This disappearance lasted seven years, and no one knows what happened during that time. The only clue they now have is a distress signal, which after analysis and frequency modulation, is identified as Latin, translating simply to save us. Just as everyone was feeling an inexplicable chill, an alarm suddenly sounded on the ship. After 56 days, the Clark had finally neared Neptune. However, the landing was anything but smooth. Upon arriving above Neptune, the spacecraft encountered severe turbulence. What worsened the situation was their proximity to the event horizon. With no response from the event horizon, they couldn't pinpoint an exact location for landing. Just as they were about to collide with the event horizon, the clouds finally dissipated at the last 500 meters and they saw the event horizon. The secondary engines were reactivated, and the spacecraft successfully docked with the event horizon. But they didn't anticipate the bizarre and horrifying events that began to unfold the moment they landed. Indeed, the female crew member, Stark, made an incredible discovery soon after. She detected that the temperature inside the event horizon was extremely low, a condition in which no ordinary human could survive. Strangely enough, there were signs of life all over the ship, floating unpredictably, almost ghost-like, throughout the spacecraft. However, this eerie phenomenon did not scare Captain Miller. To further understand the situation on the event horizon, Captain Miller personally led two crew members inside the spacecraft. Upon entering, they were greeted by countless tools and debris floating in the air, clearly indicating a fierce battle had taken place. They then found numerous black devices still operating on the ground. Dr. Weir, via video, informed them that these devices were bombs designed to separate the ship, used by the crew for escape. In this moment, the director subtly laid the groundwork for what was to come. Following that, the three crew members each began their separate tasks. However, Captain Miller was nearly scared to death by a severed arm that suddenly appeared upon his arrival at the medical bay. Meanwhile, the female crew member, Claire, in the command center, not only discovered copious amounts of blood, but also terrifying images that sent chills down her spine. Following Dr. Weir's instructions, Claire went to the console to extract the navigation log disk, but to her dismay, it was jammed and wouldn't come out. Using all her strength, she finally pulled out the disk, but as she turned around, a grotesque corpse suddenly appeared before her eyes. Strangely, they found the body had no eyes, and its soft tissues were heavily abraded. What in the world had happened? Meanwhile, Justin in the engine room made a significant discovery. He first passed through a tunnel that was like a meat grinder due to magnetic field interference and then arrived at the core of the spaceship, where he found the gravity drive, the key to creating black holes. Just as Justin was astonished by what he saw, the gravity drive suddenly activated, as if possessing a mind of its own. A blinding light shot directly into Justin's face. 
At this point, the command center wholly lost contact with Justin. Curious, Justin slowly approached the dark veil in front of him. He tried to lift a section with his finger and discovered the material was like diluted black mud. He then extended his entire arm into it, but unexpectedly, some substance inside pulled him further in. As Justin sank deeper, his safety tether stretched to its limit, causing the gravity drive to unleash unprecedented backlash. The intense force tore apart the ship's right bulkhead and destroyed all the oxygen equipment on board. With no other choice, the crew temporarily moved to the sinister event horizon, but once aboard, they discovered that all communication devices were destroyed and the carbon dioxide scrubber was broken. Even if they had brought the equipment from Clark, they would have only 20 hours of oxygen supply. This meant they had to repair the Clark and return within the next 20 hours. Incredibly, it seemed as if the event horizon came to life. One by one, the crew members began experiencing horrifying hallucinations. Initially, the female crew member Claire saw her son, who had died years ago, on the operating table. Then, Dr. Weir saw his wife, whom he had accidentally killed, followed by Captain Miller, seeing a teammate he had failed to save from a fire years earlier. Strangely, Dr. Weir denied seeing anything and suggested that the other crew members might have been hallucinating due to shock clearly hinting at something Dr. Weir was deliberately hiding. Before long, Justin, unconscious for a while, suddenly woke up and walked into the airlock alone. Without a protective suit, just the body alone, a person's internal organs and blood vessels would burst instantly under the strong air pressure. Clearly, Justin was now controlled by the dark force within him. Receiving the news, Captain Miller quickly rushed over, despite everyone's desperate pleas to open the inner door. The uncontrollable Justin still pressed the outer door switch. Justin's eyes bled profusely, and as the spaceship's door slowly opened, his body was flung into outer space, his skin torn apart by the atmospheric pressure. In the nick of time, Captain Miller, who had been waiting, leapt and successfully caught him. After timely rescue efforts, they narrowly saved him from the brink of death. Meanwhile, Dr. Weir's consciousness was gradually overtaken by the dark force. Afterward, Captain Miller questioned Dr. Weir again, but he continued to evade the questions and mask the topic with irrelevant scientific knowledge. As time ran out, Stark and Claire at the command post finally managed to decrypt a previously left video, and the terrifying footage inside horrified everyone. Captain Miller immediately ordered the mission to be abandoned and to evacuate the area. However, on the way back, Dr. Weir refused to leave and even got into a physical altercation with Captain Miller. At that moment, Dr. Weir turned utterly malevolent. You can't leave. She won't let you. you Captain Miller retorted. You just get your gear and get back on the Lewis and Clark, Doctor, or you'll find yourself walking home. Shockingly, Dr. Weir responded. I am home. Soon after, Dr. Weir went alone to the spaceship's core, where he found Claire's body. It turned out that Claire, having hallucinated seeing her deceased son again, had accidentally fallen to her death from a height. At that moment, the voice of Dr. Weir's wife echoed in his head again, and overwhelmed by guilt, he fell deep into an illusion, only to have his eyes gouged out by the apparition of his wife in the hallucination. Not long after, Dr. Weir, who had turned entirely malevolent, tampered with the Clark. Upon seeing Dr. Weir, Smith immediately reported the situation to Captain Miller. After a careful inspection, Miller discovered that several bombs previously on the event horizon had been removed. Miller urgently ordered Smith to evacuate the Clark, but Smith, having just repaired the Clark, was reluctant to leave. He quickly searched for the bombs inside the cabin. However, by the time he found them, only five seconds remained on the timer. In this helpless moment, the Clark was obliterated, and Cooper, still outside the ship, was cast into outer space with the debris. In a desperate move, Cooper pulled off his oxygen device and used the oxygen's thrust to propel himself back towards the event horizon, leaving his fate to luck. Meanwhile, DJ, who had just received the news, also fell victim to Dr. Weir. The now blind Dr. Weir, with increased strength, knocked DJ unconscious in less than two rounds. Then, in a gruesome act, 
Dr. Weir brutally disemboweled the still-living DJ, who died instantly from the injuries. When Captain Miller rushed to the scene, he found DJ cruelly dismembered and hanging from the top of the spacecraft. Captain Miller quickly prepared his weapons, determined to fight Dr. Weir to the death. However, during his search, he also found the survivor, Stark, and immediately revived her with medication. Strangely, the weapons placed on the ground just moments before had disappeared. When the two got up and turned around, Dr. Weir, who had been waiting, slowly turned his chair to face them. Seeing Dr. Weir bloodied and eyeless, Miller was utterly shocked and asked where his eyes had gone. Dr. Weir responded that the world he was going to didn't need eyes. While they were talking, Stark attempted a sneak attack but was quickly seized by the fast-reacting Dr. Weir and thrown against the wall, knocking her unconscious. Then, Cooper, who had drifted back from outer space, flew toward the scene. Upon seeing, Dr. Weir shot at him without a word, and the intense air pressure sent poor Cooper flying out again. At this moment, the internal air pressure of the spaceship became chaotic, and the intense pressure difference tore a hole in the ship. After some struggles, Dr. Weir was sucked into outer space, and fortunately, Miller and Stark managed to escape to the inside of the machine room. However, not long after, the alarm in the airlock suddenly sounded. The two initially thought it was Dr. Weir, but to their surprise, it was the lucky Cooper who had made it back to the spaceship. However, their troubles were far from over. The ship's gravity drive had already been activated, and they had to shut it down within the next seven minutes, or they would be transported again to a hellish world with the ship. With no other options, Captain Miller remembered Dr. Weir's earlier words about the onboard bombs that could split the ship in two, allowing personnel to escape in the life pods. Quickly, the three sprang into action. Cooper and Stark were tasked with sending a distress signal and stayed in the gravity chamber, while Miller ventured alone to the corridor to manually prepare the detonation. However, their efforts were not without difficulties. First, Stark was nearly drowned by a massive amount of red liquid, but Cooper managed to save her just in time. On the other hand, after Miller activated the bomb detonation mechanism, he fell into a hallucination again. His comrade, who had been burned to death, came back to life and used the flames to force Miller into the core of the spaceship. When he entered, he realized the person from his hallucination was Dr. Weir. Enraged, Miller grabbed a steel pipe from the water and furiously attacked Dr. Weir, but such blows had no effect on the transformed Dr. Weir. Seeing the corridor open and spotting the bomb detonator fall into the side, Miller knew it was his only chance. While Dr. Weir was again manipulating his consciousness, Miller used all his strength to seize the detonator. The moment he pressed it, Dr. Weir was plunged into despair. Instantly, the entire corridor was destroyed. The escape pod successfully detached, and Dr. Weir and Miller were sucked into the black hole with the ship's tail, leaving Stark and Cooper, along with the severely injured Justin, as the final survivors. I wonder how many viewers can still insist on their dare watching up to now. While the special effects of the entire film are not the sole highlight, the remarkable scenes are memorable and often leave one with the urge to watch it again after the first viewing. This concludes Event Horizon. Thanks for watching our recap. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our exciting movie journeys. See you next time.